Late in the evening of February 24th, 1942, sirens blasted throughout Los Angeles County, warning its three million residents that an air raid was imminent. It was only three months after the devastating Japanese sneak attack on Pearl Harbor that prompted the United States to enter World War II, and citizens and military officials alike feared another strike on the country's west coast. When the alarm sounded, thousands of air raid wardens were dispatched, ushering people into bomb shelters and ensuring that everybody observed the mandatory blackout that would veil Los Angeles from the supposed threat of enemy aircraft overhead. During the night, nine tons of anti-aircraft artillery shells were fired over the city at suspected enemy planes, but by dawn, the firing stopped, and there was scant evidence of any enemy presence or attempted attack. The U.S. military dismissed the chaos as a simple false alarm, but as newspapers continued to report on the story, and more witnesses described what they saw in the sky that night, it felt that the official explanation was unsatisfactory. Tensions were only heightened on February 26th, when the Los Angeles Times published this photo, showing several searchlight beams converging on an unidentified object in the sky. The event has since become known as the Battle of Los Angeles, and it remains one of the most mysterious and unexplained incidents in World War II. Were there enemy planes in the sky that night? If there were, why were the anti-aircraft batteries completely ineffective? What was the unidentified object the military saw on radars, and how did it disappear? It all began when 4th Interceptor Command radars detected an unidentified object in the airspace above the Pacific Ocean, about 120 miles west of Los Angeles. Anti-aircraft batteries were immediately put on green alert, or ready to fire, as the military tracked the mysterious object's eastwardly path approaching the California coast. When the UFO was within only a few miles of Los Angeles at 2.21 a.m., the air raid sirens were sounded, and a blackout was ordered. Reports of enemy airplane lights soon began flooding into the Air Force Information Center. Commanders were baffled, however, because at the same time, the unidentified object vanished from radar. At 3.16 a.m., the first military visual contact with the mystery object was supposedly established, and anti-aircraft forces fired the first of what would end up being more than 1,400 rounds of ammunition into the sky over the course of the next hour. At 12.8 pounds per round, more than 9 tons of deadly shells were fired, along with 50 caliber machine guns directly over highly populated Los Angeles County. Amazingly, nobody was directly killed by any of the munitions, though five people did perish in the chaos of the battle, three in car accidents, and two from heart attacks brought on by the stress of the incident. The last shell was fired at 4.14 a.m. At 7.21 a.m., the blackout order was lifted, and the all-clear signal was given, indicating the threat had finally passed. Throughout the entire ordeal, the U.S. Air Force kept its pilots on high alert, but never launched an aerial response because, other than the initial object that disappeared, no other enemy planes showed up on radar. This was especially unusual given that more than 30 witnesses came forward with reports of enemy aircraft observations over Los Angeles that night. One colonel reported seeing, quote, about 25 planes at 12,000 feet over Los Angeles shortly after the alarm sounded. Others reported seeing what they described as, quote, swarms of up to 200 planes. These craft of varying sizes flew erratically across the skies at varied speeds from, quote, very slow to more than 200 miles per hour, and at elevations ranging from only a few thousand feet to miles above the city. However, despite these reports and the massive anti-aircraft barrage fired at the alleged planes, not a single one was downed in the battle, and there's no evidence that any mysterious foreign aircraft dropped any bombs or caused any direct damage to the city. In the days after the air raid, the Army and Navy appeared to have two diverging views of what happened. At a press conference only hours after the end of the supposed battle, Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox stated emphatically that the raid was a false alarm. He further placed the blame on, quote, war nerves, or heightened fear of an attack given the recent nature of Pearl Harbor and escalating tensions of World War II. The Army's Western Defense Command initially agreed and drafted a report on the incident stating that, quote, most previous reports had been greatly exaggerated and that there were no planes over Los Angeles that night. But just a week later, Secretary of War Henry Stimson would contradict the prior conclusion, stating that, quote, from one to five unidentified airplanes had been over Los Angeles that night. 
Stimson went on to suggest they could have been launched by the Japanese to fly into the LA airspace and elicit a military response in order to locate anti-aircraft defenses. Such intelligence would aid Japan in a future attack. Others in the army suggested it could have been a stunt for the purpose of psychological warfare, with its only goal to induce panic and discord within the American public. The conflict and explanations put forth by the Navy and Army fueled speculation in the press that the military was covering something up. It would subsequently take more than 40 years for the government to issue an official report, allowing a number of theories to develop in its absence. Of particular interest to many wartime observers was a Japanese submarine attack that occurred just north of the Battle of Los Angeles only a day before. In the incident, a Japanese raider managed to surface and shell the California coast before escaping back to sea. Some have wondered if that attack may have been a trial run for something bigger. It is known that the Japanese built at least 42 aircraft carrier submarines loaded with small float planes that were used in a handful of ineffective raids. However, at least publicly, none of the aircraft possessed the capability to evade radar that was supposedly observed that night. The only other known Japanese attacks to reach the continental U.S. occurred from late 1944 until 1945, when over 9,000 fire balloon bombs were launched into the jet stream towards the west coast. News of the balloon attacks was censored at the time, but post-war records indicate that the program was not operative in 1942. Japanese war planners later confirmed that they had no air operations active over Los Angeles on the date of the unexplained event. With Japan unlikely as a culprit, others have advanced the theory that only an extraterrestrial spacecraft could have possessed the technology that could explain the object's sudden disappearance from radar and extreme maneuverability. Eyewitnesses reported that the mysterious craft seemed to float in the sky for several minutes at a time, and moved in ways no known human-made aircraft could. The characteristics of the sightings also seems to match later U.S. Air Force pilot encounters with, quote, Foo Fighters, that were alternatively explained as UFOs, or secret flying saucers, being tested by one of the nations involved in the war. While it is more slightly realistic that the Battle of Los Angeles could have been part of a secret weapons test, US and German flying saucer prototypes were not believed to be in development until the end of the war. Foo Fighter sightings were also eventually explained as electromagnetic atmospheric phenomena such as St. Elmo's fire, leaving the UFO theory lacking significant supporting evidence. The official U.S. government report on the Battle of Los Angeles would not come until a 1983 analysis of West Coast defenses during World War II. In the report, the Office of Air Force History attempted to reconcile the initial conflicting U.S. military statements about the event and came up with an explanation centered on a weather balloon and false alarm. The report contends that a meteorological balloon was released in the area to assess wind conditions shortly before the incident. It was the author's opinion that the balloon could have appeared on radar for a time before disappearing. Jittery nerves in the aftermath of Pearl Harbor would have prompted the Army Air Force to launch the barrage of anti-aircraft munitions without conclusive evidence of enemy threat. The report states that, quote, Once the firing started, imagination created all kinds of targets in the sky, and everyone joined in. The report's authors believed that eyewitnesses did not see enemy aircraft but rather saw the anti-aircraft shells and bursts illuminated by the giant searchlights the Army Air Force used to scan the skies for threats. So what was it that really triggered the Battle of Los Angeles the night of February 24th, 1942? That the U.S. government chose to implicate a weather balloon, an explanation that so often is the proposed solution to unexplained military events, seems to leave us with more questions than answers. Unlike the object illuminated in the LA Times photo that has come to symbolize the mysterious incident, it appears that we will remain in the dark. <laughs>